And we're going to bring in right now, Dan Rosen, NHL analyst. And a matter of fact, I was just watching your Rangers preview just about three minutes ago. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Doing your so homework, I got, I I got a double dose of you right now. <laughs> All right. Nice. Well, good. And, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. I know it's been a couple of years since you were on our other show that we had. It's so glad to have you back. Um, let's start with the three of us went to the Ranger Island the preseason game the other night. And I want to ask you about two players on each side that fans are curious about, Nils Lundqvist and Robin Salo. Um, I thought they both looked pretty good. What are, you, what are your thoughts on those guys making each squad respectively for this coming season? Well, I think Salo's got a very long shot because the Islanders seem pretty set with what they are. Um, you know, they brought in a lot of veteran presence around their lineup. So I, I think he's, got, uh, he's a long shot. Very much so. But you never know. I mean, things could happen. Injuries, guys could surprise and whatnot. But I would say long shot. Nils has got the front runner uh, for that spot on the right side of the third pair of the Rangers. With, likely with Patrick Nemeth. That's what he's been with. That's what he's been with in training camp at times with Patrick Nemeth. And I think that's why they brought in Patrick Nemeth to be, you know, that steadying, big, physical, stay-at-home presence on the left side of a third with a guy like Nils Lundqvist. Uh, so I would say that Nils Lundqvist has the. All right, we got you back. You got me back now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know what just happened there. It just totally cut out and put me. Anyway. All right. One time it booted again. me and I'm um, the host. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, maybe they didn't like what you were saying. Um, you know what? <laughs> I was, as I was saying, I think Nils Lundqvist has the inside track to, to the job there. But it was interesting for me on the Rangers especially with their D, is they have so many young D right now. Uh, I think Hartford's going to be loaded, really, with, with a lot of young D because there's only so many spots in New York. But you, know, you figure Braden Schneider and Zach Jones and Matthew Robertson. I mean, where does Igor Hayek fall onto this depth chart? He might be down at like 9 or 10 or 11 at this point with the way that the Rangers have developed some young D. Dan, it's funny because just before you got on, we were talking about um, Nils Lundqvist and Braden Schneider and then Zach Jones as well and how well Jones and Schneider looked last night. If they continue to play the way that they played last night against some better competition, do you think that could force Drury and Gallant to make a tougher decision than they would have originally anticipated before the start of camp in terms of maybe even Patrick Nemeth or maybe even Nils Lundqvist? Well, look, Patrick Nemeth signed a three-year contract. Uh, he's on the team. They didn't sign Patrick Nemeth to a three-year contract to cut him, uh, waive him, or whatever. It would be sh you know, in favor of a younger player who could go to Hartford and may need more time in Hartford. I mean, you're talking about Zach Jones has played just a handful of NHL games. Braden Schneider has never played an NHL game, nor has Nils Lundqvist. But Nils Lundqvist has played professionally. Uh, and I think that, you know, at a, at a high level in Sweden and done very well there, winning the Borea Samig Awards, the best Swedish-born defenseman in the SHL last year. So I would be shocked if Chris Drury and Gerard Gallant erred on the side of youth and inexperience for their D, especially with a team that believes in, and I think rightly so, it should be a playoff contender, instead of going with experience and size and guys who have kind of been around for a while when they don't have to do that. So I, I, I do think Zach Jones and I do think Braden Schneider will get games in the NHL this season. Um, but they'll come at the expense of injuries and, and things along those lines, or just really poor play if that, if it gets to that point, but you're really looking at two, maybe three spots when you consider their top four is, is set. And then when you consider Nemeth is a veteran and Jared Tenorti's got a lot of size and I think he was brought in to be the seventh defenseman. Plus you still have Anthony Boteto in the mix as well. It, to me, it doesn't make sense to rush Braden Schneider and Zach Jones based off of how they look in training camp and a handful of preseason games. Dan, in your NHL preview that I was just mentioned that I was watching, you use a great phrase, which was that the Rangers – thought they were in the playoff race last year and then they go to the Islanders and then they just get <laughs> slapped around. And mm -hmm. so that's why I, that's actually why I think this team had to address the third and fourth line and get some sandpaper and some grit. Did this team 
address all those problems that they had going from playing against the Islanders and the Bruins and then the Tom Wilson incident, of course. Well, yes, they did. No question about it. Barkley Goudreau is a huge addition. I, I, I know people get hung up on the contract six years. I think it's like three and a half or 3.6 million per year. Don't get hung up on the contract. Barkley Goudreau is going to be a valuable player for the Rangers for the next five or six years because of everything he does. He's so versatile. He's not going to be relied upon to be a big time scorer. Doesn't have to be. He, he, he can score. We've seen him score. Uh, he scored some big goals in his career, man. He scored an overtime for San Jose that won a huge series, and he, he scored a big goal in Florida last year for Tampa Bay, and he was a big, obviously a huge part of their run on that third line. He's so important. I love that song. Uh, Ryan Reeves, look, we know what Ryan Reeves brings. We get that. That's, that's a no-brainer of what he is, and he will help them in that department. It's gonna, the Rangers will have more pushback in game, not the next game this year, okay? There's no question about that. Uh, Sam Blay, I think, can be a real surprise for the Rangers. He's a lot, He's a guy who scored at lower levels, hasn't really found an offensive touch or an offensive, you know, consistent offensive game in the NHL. But he's, but he can score, and he's big, physical, grinding, straight line guy. And what do all those three guys have in common? They've played in the Stanley Cup final or won the Stanley Cup. Barclay Gaudreau's won it once, uh, twice. Sammy Blay won it once. Ryan Reeves played in the the final so they did address the issue that well i don't even call it an issue the concern i would have is can philip heedle be a third line center and if it's not philip heedle is it ryan strom but it doesn't seem like it would be ryan strom because artemi panarin and ryan strom have great chemistry together so it's got to be philip heedle can philip heedle be a third line center playing in that type of role while also being an offensive threat that's going to be the question, I think, that needs to get answered for the Rangers this season uh, to, for them to have, to show the depth that I think that they do have down the middle. Dan, in, in regards to the Islanders, the last two years they couldn't climb the mountain, which was the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, what, do, what do they have to do this year to get over that hump, or has it just come down to something as simple as avoid Tampa Bay? <laughs> uh, well... I mean, if avoiding Tampa Bay would be nice in the playoffs. There's no question about that. But, um, I don't think the Islanders have to do anything different. Let's not forget. The Islanders were one goal away from, in my mind, winning the Stanley Cup. Okay? Because I think they win that game second, and that's a one nothing game. They go into the Stanley Cup final. They're the favorite. And they beat Montreal exactly the way that Tampa did. Because they were better than Montreal. So, yes, they'd have to play that round. But they're one goal away from probably winning the Stanley Cup and we're having we're not having this conversation they didn't get that goal so I understand you know obviously it's a question but look the Islanders know exactly what they are they play to their system as well or better than any other team in the league Um, their center depth is really good I mean really good Barzell Brock Nelson JG Pazjo and Casey Sezikis line that up and that's as good or better than every other team in the league. Yeah, I know we're going to say, oh, what about Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl? But, but it drops off after that, right? They don't have Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. But the Edmonton Oilers don't have Casey Sezikis and J.G. Paggio, right? So um, they're, they're really good. Their, their D is solid. Uh, I think they'll miss Nick Letty and that skating ability and his presence on the power play. But... That means Noah Dobson has to jump up and be a big-time player in that sense. I like the addition of Zach Parisi in a third-line role, that triple P line, which I think they could have with Pajot, Parisi, and Palmieri can really be a dynamite third line. Uh, And I think Oliver Walsh should play on the top line with Matthew Barzal and Andrews Lee. And, oh, by the way, Andrews Lee is back. Their goaltending is solid. To me, they're this – they are – I mean, I can easily see Islanders in the Stanley Cup final this season. They're, They're that good in my opinion, and they know exactly what they are and they play to it. Sticking with the Islanders, Dan, how do you think the loss of Jordan Eberle will affect the team? Well, that's where Oliver Wallstrom has to step up. I don't think it affects them at all if Oliver Wallstrom plays the way he's capable of. And Wallstrom's a terrific player. He's a first-round pick. He's got an unreal shot, terrific release. And now he should, in theory, get the opportunity. Uh, I mean, how dangerous of a line 
is Lee in front of the net, Barzell doing his thing, the Dixie dudes all around the ice, and Oliver is setting up Oliver Wallstrom for a one T that's just going to blow you away. You know, uh, you know, I think that's where you know they won't miss Jordan ever. Lee Wallstrom steps up. I also think re-signing Kyle Palmieri helps in that regard too, because if Wallstrom doesn't make it, you know, doesn't help you in that, in that aspect and or needs more time, you can always throw Kyle Palmieri up on that line and you know exactly what you're going to get. I don't think they miss that really that much. I really don't because they had an easy, natural, younger replacement. Yeah, that's true. Or do you think that the Islanders are a power play trigger man away from really being a Stanley Cup champion right now? Because that, that's the only well, weakness I see with them. I, yeah, although Pulak's got a huge shot. You know, I mean, let's not forget about that. I mean, the guy's got a massive bump from the point. Um, and I think I I think that Wallstrom really can be an effective player in that sense, too. I, I think his shot can be a real threat on the power play. Let's see how it rolls for a little bit. I, I, and we all know that Lou Lamarillo is not one that's going to be shy about tinkering and adding at the, you know, at or, at or before the trade deadline to make things more effective for the Islanders. But honestly, I don't see any holes with the Islanders. Um, I don't see a hole in it. I can I can make a case for a lot of teams that they're missing this or they're missing that or I'm questioning this or questioning that. It's very, I'm really not with the New York Islanders. Now, Dan, before, um, you know, before we let you go, I want in the Metro as a whole, the three of us and a lot of other people for that matter, I've kind of predicted for Washington and Pittsburgh to fall off the last two years or so. And it just it just hasn't happened. Um, do you think this is do you think this is a year where one of them fails to qualify for the playoffs for the first time in a long time? I do. I do. I think this is a, it could, could be a struggle for the Pittsburgh Penguins this year. You're going to be missing Sidney Crosby at the start of the season. He may miss four games. He may miss eight games. He may miss more. I'm not sure. But any time that Sidney Crosby is out of the lineup is obviously a detriment to the Panthers. Of the and, and this division could come down to one or two points being the difference in making or missing. In fact, it probably will come down to one or two points being the difference. And those points, you can find them in October. It's hard to make them up in March and April, you know. Um, yeah. And that's – that's going to be a problem. And if Genny Malkin being out for two months, for, the, for at least the first two months of the regular season, is an enormous blow to the Pittsburgh Penguins. These these guys, we all know as good as you know how good they are and what they've done. And more than anything, their centers, it's such an important position. And Malkin being out, that's a lot on the shoulders of a Jeff Carter, even when Sidney comes back. That's a lot on the shoulders of Jeff Carter, who at 36, 37 years old is not a player anymore. He just isn't. He's been that player, but he just isn't that player anymore. And then you have the question mark in goal. Like Tristan Jarry was solid last season, but he was not good in the playoffs. And does that eat away at him? The, the, you know, the we got hey, it. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Bounce, bounce All right, we got you again. Again. <laughs> me out again. Obviously, <laughs> like the who. Well, I was running this show likes the Penguins more than I do, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I'm hardwired. <laughs> yeah, you know what, well, I'm not. That's the problem. So <laughs> you're, you're kind of right. I mean, I view, I view McCann and Tanev out with McGinn and Heinen, Heinen, Danton Heinen in a little bit of a downgrade for sure. I yeah, think. I think so, a hundred percent. That Tanev is a big loss. He's a grinding third line. Look, we see how valuable third lines are. Look at the Tampa Bay Lightning, right? I mean. They don't win without that third line. They don't win without those players. And that, to me, is what Brandon Tanev is. And that, to me, what Jeremy Hayne can also deliver, too. Big losses. No question about it. So, and I then, think the Pittsburgh Penguins can have an issue making the playoffs this year. I, I would say Washington, too. Uh, the loss of Brendan Dillon, I think, could really hurt them going forward. Yeah, yeah. that That's an interesting loss, too. I like Washington a little bit more than I do Pittsburgh. Again, Nick Backstrom hurt right now. If Nick Backstrom doesn't come back healthy, that's a big problem. But they Definitely. have Backstrom. They have Kuznetsov. Obi's still ripping the puck into the net. They got Carlson on the back end. I think their goaltending is solid. Um, yeah, I have a few, I have fewer questions about Washington than I do, uh, you know, about Pittsburgh. And I think the biggest questions I have with Pittsburgh are. The Malkin injury, less so the Crosby injury, but the Malkin injury and the goaltending because, again, Jerry was good last season, but he was not good in the playoffs, and that can eat away at a young goalie. 
another team I think a lot of people aren't looking, uh, or at least their radar isn't showing them, is the the Philadelphia Flyers could rebound uh, this year too, yeah. right? They yeah. can definitely rebound with the with the additions they made, especially on D and Ryan Ellis and, and Rasmus Ristolainen. Rasmus Ristolainen could be a guy that everybody looks at and says, "Whoa, I didn't realize how good he was," because Ristolainen was stuck in a bad situation in Buffalo for a long time, and eventually that eats away at you. And, and now he's fresh out of out of there and into a market that you know believes it's a playoff contender and. And I think that could really play a big dividends for him and the Philadelphia Flyers. And we know what Ryan Ellis is. Ryan Ellis is a gamer. He's terrific. He, he can move the puck around. He's got a great shot. Um, they had big issues with being hard to play against and, and keeping the puck out of the net last year. They're going to be better in that department, but Carter Hart's going to deliver too. And he was not good last year either. So Carter Hart, it's a lot, a lot on a young goalie too. And, I mean, l- lastly – does the Carolina – I know Carolina is going to be a very good team. There's no question about that. But I question – Nedeljkovic had a Calder final a season, and they let him go, and they brought in Freddie Anderson and Antti Ranta and also Morazic out. Would you say their goaltending maybe slightly declined? I think it's even um, with the potential of if Nedeljkovic really was going to start to take off and maybe it would be on, you know not as good as it was last year, but – we're not 100% sure that was one run, one you know, shortened season for Nedeljkovic, so we'll see. Um, there's a lot of turnover in Carolina. Goaltending, Dougie Hamilton out. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a lot different there right now. So while I think Rob Brindamore is a terrific coach, and, and they are another team like the Islanders that know exactly how they have to play to win, and when they play that way, they're almost impossible to beat. I think there is a little bit of a question there because of the number, you know, the, the number of players in and out of the lineup that, that from what we've seen, but from Carolina, but I think that they're so solid. And I, I, and to be honest, I just, I just love guys like Sebastian Ajo and Andre Svechnikov, oh. Table Terrain. And I mean, those guys are just terrific forwards. They can play for any team in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well Dan, that thanks mean, for- what I mean by that is they could, they could play for my team. No question. <laughs> well, I, I, I yeah. think we're all in agreement. We, we had that conversation on Sunday. Sebastian Ajo is the guy I would pluck off at any of my rivals yeah. right now. Absolutely. He's he's excellent. He's always involved in the play. He's always yeah. creating scoring chances, and he's always got the play. Yeah, and great defensively. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Dan. We're, we're all excited to get the season going, and, you know, I think it's going to be a great year in the NHL this year. But, um, you know, we'll talk to you down the road for sure. And, uh, well, he's gone again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We lost him like three yeah. times in one in one thing. It must yeah. have been Lou. Lou. Lou must have known that he was talking about the Islanders and said he pulled the plug. That must have been the reason. <laughs> if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.